So we're going to start the webinar right now and uh, and and get going into the fun stuff. Hi, everybody. My name's Chris, and you are at Worsta's uh, webinar, Gemini for Google Workspace, Unlock the AI-Powered Workplace. So happy everybody is here. Out of curiosity, for everyone that is here, if, if you don't mind, would you mind putting in your role at work inside the chat, if you if you wouldn't mind. Uh, I'm interested to see what kind of folks we have joining this call. If you don't want to, that's fine. but. I'm just a curious busybody. Uh, so let's get into, let's kick things off, talk about our speakers. First speaker, welcome, Brian. Thank you for uh, for uh, for doing that. And, and welcome, welcome, Chris. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, so, hey, my name's Chris uh, as well. I am the lead Gemini Workspace Google trainer, uh, Gemini for Google Workspace trainer at Worsta. I've been at Worsta for a combo of about three and a half, four-ish years. I've also uh, worked at Google, training on everything, training people internally and externally for everything from Chromebooks to Google Assistant to uh, to Google Meet and Google Meet hardware. So that's a little bit about me. Uh, I love connecting with diverse businesses and helping them achieve their unique goals in Google Workspace and using technology. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a big technology dork, so I was one of the guys who, who was telling people about AI years ago, and now I, I, I enter every AI call with a little bit of a smirk because I knew this all was happening. So <laughs> happy to be here. And also today we've got a special guest. We're joined by Chris Kelter. He's a, uh, he is uh, awesome. Chris, you can, you can intro yourself real quick. Sure, thank you. Yeah, I'm Chris Kelter. I'm the business technology project manager at the Bud Group. Uh, we are a service solutions company, and uh, I'm the the project manager for all the IT infrastructure for the the company. Um, I've been with the Bud Group for about two years. After 13 years at Apple, in a number of different capacities, from data analysis, team management, uh, project management, infrastructure, so on and so forth. Happy to be here. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. Chris is with Bud Group, and uh, we recently trained Bud Group with Gemini, and they're going through uh, and trying out Gemini right now in their workspace. So we thought that bringing on Chris would be an awesome voice to talk about uh, the benefits of using Gemini in the in his workforce. So this is the agenda. This is what we're going to go through real quick. We're going to go through and talk about AI. Uh, I'm just going to do a, sort of a, a high level overview of the latest updates for Google Workspace Gemini. Uh, we'll talk about Gemini in action. I'll do a rocket blast through all the different things you can do inside Gemini. I'll, I'll open up my demo account and uh, and take you guys through that. Then I'll interview Chris for a little bit, just uh, ask him a few questions. And then we're going to talk about Worst's pricing and transformation packages and leave at time at the end for a Q&A. That'll be how it goes. Uh, welcome, Joe. Uh, and then also, just so you guys know, we are taking notes with Gemini in the right-hand corner of the screen in Google Meet. This is a, a service that Gemini allows in for Gemini for business accounts. So uh, you'll be able to look at the notes and even some of the notes of how we prepped for this meeting uh, 25 minutes ago as well. Uh, and, and so, uh, yeah, you'll be able to keep in touch with those notes as, as we're going along this presentation. Awesome. So as you guys know, AI is not new, and AI is not new, especially to Google Workspace. Uh, in fact, in 2014, even before this chart is representing, Google acquired DeepMind, which is uh, the world's leading AI research company. They created AlphaGo, which not only defeats chess masters, but also Go masters, which is a more advanced game than chess. They developed AlphaFold, which uh, revolutionized protein structure prediction, which was like a 50-year quandary for biology. Uh, but over the last 20 years or so, they're they've been incorporating little tiny bits and pieces of AI into the Google Workspace offering that you just may have noticed or may have not noticed. These include things like, uh, let's see what we got here. We got the smart reply. Uh, that may meant you could reply to emails with like quick responses like, hey, that sounds great. Or, uh, wow, that, I love that idea. You know, these were quick AI responses that you could just click. Uh, spelling and grammar suggestions, noise cancellation. You wouldn't know it right now, but I have a really loud AC in my room, 
and using artificial intelligence, Google Meet is cutting out the sound of that AC. And that's just another exa example of AI being used inside Google. Uh, and they've been developing AI-generated summaries for documents and formula suggestions. But now, moving on forward, uh, it became Gemini, or at first it was BARD, and then it became Gemini, the actual uh, artificial intelligence large language model that Google Workspace is offering. And funny fact, we last did a external presentation about Gemini in May of this year. And there's been a lot, and I mean a lot of updates. In fact, if I can share, present something else. One second. Yeah, so these are the updates that you can see inside Gemini, uh, and, and it goes on down the line forever and ever. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to scroll, 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 scroll. It's so many updates, right? How do you even keep in touch with that? Well, uh, let's go over what really quickly uh, happened. Well, there was Google Vids, something I'll show very, very quickly, but uh, it allows you to create videos incredibly easily with by actually referencing documents and slides and videos or even just using AI. There's Gemini 1.5 Pro, which was their latest language model, which turned into Gemini 1.05 Flash, which is basically the same model, but faster. Uh, there was Notebook LM, something that is in the in the zeitgeist right now being talked about that I will do a quick demo of, as well as, this was a big one, uh, Gemini in May, you couldn't do this, and now you can. You can actually, it's a uh, turn on workspace extensions and access your Google Docs, Sheets, Slides, your Google Drive, your Gmail, Tasks, Calendar, uh, Notes, Keep Notes, everything else. Those are all extensions that are available inside uh, Gemini. And then also, this was a huge update in August as well, GEMS. GEMS, I'll, I'll go over really quickly, but GEMS are uh, little mini AI agents that you can program and train to uh, do specific tasks or to teach you about certain things. Uh, there's really infinity <laughs> uh, options you can do with GEMS. Moving on, you can upload files. Uh, Calendar and Google Chat got integrated. Uh, Basic Gemini was announced for Google Workspace. Uh, and we'll talk about that and what that means. And then uh, this month as well, Imogen 3 came out, which is uh, Google's latest image generation model. And now, of course, uh, Gemini is just incredibly creative and collaborative for you at work, right? Uh, it acts as a collaborator, a coach, uh, a partner. In fact, I use it for motivation as well. Uh, sometimes I'm I'm uh, I'm tired in the morning, and I use Gemini to pep me up with a few strongly structured sentences of "Get back to work, Chris," or "Work on this," or or inspire me about this. Uh, and also, I use it to to write and create images. I use it to look at and organize my data and connect with it in ways that I didn't I wasn't able to last year. It also just generally over just overarching uh, just umbrella is it, it helps me save time every single day. Uh, it saves me time with summarizing documents and uh, it helps me save time by reading emails for me or, or summarizing them or being able to respond to emails in a quick and easy fashion. It helps me uh, look at document outlines and reorganize my data in the background. And also, it just improves the quality of my work. If you have your coworkers who aren't really up to snuff lately, if they add in Gemini into their workflow, all of a sudden, they become a lot more articulate. They become a lot more understandable, and their work actually, uh, their, the quality of their work heightens drastically uh, with things like voice consistency, advanced grammar suggestions. And even if you've got coworkers who are not English uh, speaking, uh, or, or English speaking is not their first language, uh, Gemini works in multiple different languages, including Spanish, but also will help understand uh, these different languages and convert them into English in, uh, in for non-native English speakers. And by the way, uh, Worsta offers not only training in Gemini in English, but we offer training in Gemini in Spanish as well. You also hear about in AI these prompt masters, these pom prompt geniuses, these prompt wizards. Uh, but to be fair, uh, prompting in 
Gemini and in AI in general is very important because the better the prompt you put in, the better the output you get, generally speaking. This is an image from, or this is uh, an example of prompt, prompt structure from the prompting guide that Google uh, can uh, has and has given out. We'll give it out at the end of this call as well. But you can see that in this prompt, they have a persona, a task, a context, and a format. So persona being the HR manager, the task being creating a script for onboarding presentation, the context being it's for new hires and the format being talking points, right? I like to call this the uh, the Princess Bride structure or uh, the Inigo Montoya structure because it sounds a lot like, hello, my name is Inigo Montoya, you killed my father, prepare to die, right? So in that example, uh, that actually sounds like a pretty good AI structure because it has the persona, I'm Inigo Montoya, the task, uh, prepare to die, the context, you, you killed my father, and and then the format. Format would be, I guess, uh, a sword fight in that format. But yeah, it's a good example of uh, being specific with your prompt and also uh, at least 21 words or more. So the more uh, details of your prompt, the better. It's also important to talk about the privacy and security of Gemini. Uh, I'm only gonna look at that poll, by the way. Okay, we've got people using AI internally, but we've got four folks who did, a, who, who did the poll who are using it in a third-party AI platform, probably that their work doesn't know about. That's a little bit sketchy, honestly, because uh, you cannot guarantee that the info that you are putting into those large language models outside, so those large language models like ChatGPT or Llama or Notion or whatever, uh, they, you cannot guarantee that those that information is not being, they're not being trained on after the fact, right? Um, yeah, I'm happy, happy to comment on uh, HIPAA compliance uh, in, later on in this call for sure, Brian. Uh, so. And I'll, let me actually get a, one second. I'll get a, uh, exactly what AI, you know, the, the, uh, the compliance is uh, in this, in the chat later on as well. But uh, you're basically answering the exact same terms of service or signing the exact same terms of service you would for Google Workspace when you're using Gemini for Workspace. Uh, so that means that any file that you have that you own, Gemini can access and can, and can, uh, you can use for data, right? But that's only in your company's tenant. Uh, so that means that you cannot say, hey, what are my boss's emails or my boss's files? And what is he doing right now? And how is he reacting to those emails? No, you, you can't do that because uh, you, you don't have those permissions, right? Uh, so it's all about your, your data access and, and data use. You're in control. So uh, the same way that you can access, you can delete and you can share your, your files, uh, it's the same way with Gemini data as well. Uh, so Gemini cannot access the files that you don't have access to. This also means that uh, Gemini works in a bubble. So every company's Gemini uh, is, a, is their own specific Gemini for their own tenant. It works in a bubble. So anything that that large language or that language model is trained on does not leave your tenant and does not get trained on for the larger language model that is you know your your gemini for regular gmails as well let's also quickly talk about notebook lm notebook lm is this uh feature that people are using more and more kind of in a viral sense by using it uh but you can use up to 50 sources to train a single notebook. And these sources are incredibly big. You can put in full books if you wanted to of PDFs. It provides summaries, FAQs, briefing documents, and it also creates a really awesome audio overview podcast. And to show you what that's like, I'm sharing this tab where I literally just copied the, these slides into a notebook. And you can see that it provides FAQs, table of contents, briefing document. Uh, but as well, it, it also provided this really cool podcast that I'm going to play for a minute right now. All right, get ready to dive deep because today we're looking into Google's Gemini for Google Workspace. Everybody can hear you know, that. We asked for materials and you guys sent over a ton of Worsta webinar slides which is fantastic because they seem to be the experts on all things Gemini. They definitely know their stuff. And you know what else is fantastic? These slides feature Christopher Hopkins Ward. 
He's a lead Gemini trainer at Worcester. Oh. You might actually recognize him from those Gemini Quick Tips videos. Oh, yeah, those are great. I know, right? It seems like someone has a little bit of a tech crush. Maybe just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Hopkins Ward's videos are just so clear and practical. He really oh. makes Gemini feel approachable, you know, even exciting. Wow. It's not every day you find a tech expert who can explain complex stuff without making your head spin. He's definitely got a knack for making AI accessible. But let's not forget about Gemini itself. I mean, it really is a game changer, wouldn't you say? Okay. Absolutely. It's like all the... Okay, okay. That's enough of that. That's that's enough of that. Um, But <laughs> but that is Gemini... Or that is Notebook LM. And yes, technically, Brian, you might have already access to this if you have a Google Workspace uh, business or enterprise account. And this just shows you what you can do with Gemini uh, or, or with Notebook LM. So try it out now. It's at, uh, what, what's the site? It is notebooklm.google.com. So I would try that out and explore. So we're gonna go into a, a quick Gemini demo now. And I'm gonna use sort of uh, the Bud Group as a guinea pig testing, uh, testing examples using the Bud Group. And they've given me permission to do this. So let's go into my demo account. So this is the Gemini for Google, the Gemini app, the, the chat app. You, When you have Gemini, it, this is where I would basically make my home base. This is very different than the Gemini you get when it's just the basic offering. And that's, a, that's an important distinction. You'll notice things like Gemini Advanced is here. You don't get Gemini Advanced with the basic Gemini offering. You'll also notice gems here on the left-hand corner of the screen. You don't get gems with the basic Gemini offering. And you'll also notice this ability to upload files. You can only upload an image with basic Gemini for workspace that is uh, set for free. And lastly, you don't get extensions with uh, workspace for free. Awesome. So I'm just going to ask it a normal question like, uh, tell me, about the bug group. And let's see what pops up. Awesome. So you're leading faci leading facility services company headquartered in, in North Carolina. You can see these references that it found here. Overview of the services, where to find more information, and then the sources related to the content, right? Now this is great because I can also modify this response here. I can share it or export it into a draft or into a doc if I wanted to. One of my favorite buttons inside Gemini is the just ability to make sure that everything is correct by evaluating its statement for, uh, for, for correct information. So you can see that everything green is highlighted. They found a reference for a specific reference online. And for the record, Everything that would be highlighted in orange, but you don't see anything in orange, would be more of like a, oh, Go uh, Gemini isn't quite sure about this information, or it made an inference about the information. Uh, Brian, feel free to pop in a, your question into the chat, and I see you have your, your hand raised, and we'll have someone on the call answer your question for you. Uh, so yeah, so I can also, if I wanted to, let's turn this off, I can highlight specific sections of the Gemini answer, and I can edit just that section. So I can say expand, make it longer, shorter, or, or you know, uh, uh, make this from the POV of a uh, Cali surfer. Let's see what happens there. Dude, you need your crib, do you need a deep clean? <laughs> so yeah, you can change every single response you want inside uh, Google or inside uh, Gemini. And I can continue to my conversation with Gemini as well. So I can say, what are their goals for 2025? Let's just do that. So they don't know technically, but they are making some guesses. Continued growth, sustainability, customer satisfaction. Uh, and then it gives, and tells me to contact Bug Group directly. Great. So that's awesome. That's my basic uh, handling of you know a Gemini prompt, right? But with the extensions, I can level up. So now, say I have inside my drive files about Bud Group. So I can say, tell me about Bud Group. And now it's not just searching the internet for my answers. It's actually searching my Google Drive for any files that I have related as well. Let's see what it found. 
It's coming up with some options. There we go. So this is the information it found, and it's also using these different files from my drive as well. Super awesome. But let's not forget, it also connects not just to my drive, but to my Gmail as well. So I'm going to go into my Gmail, and I can say, tell me about my emails. I'm going to say from Jon Snow. He's my other demo friend. And it will search my email. So say, uh, imagine I, I, I leave for a week from for vacation, and I come back, and I've got so many emails from Jon Snow that I don't even know where to start. He's my manager, and he, he's bugging me about multiple different projects that I need to uh, talk about. Now I can just ask Gemini about my entire week's emails if I want to. I can say, tell me about my emails of a, uh, from this customer or from this person. And from here, I can respond very, very quickly and easily. Uh, so these extensions, as you can see, really level up what you can do with Gemini. But let's talk about gems as well. Gems are little mini uh, AI trained agents that you can use sort of like a really advanced prompt before you even start talking to uh, Gemini. And you can see that Google has pre-made some gems to start off with. So as an example, this is the Brainstormer gem. It helps you inspire, it inspires you to, uh, to create and, and ideate. And this is how this gem works. It's filled with quite intense instructions. So you can see that there's a purpose, goals, overall direction. So like be energetic and enthusiastic. And then probably the most important part, the step-by-step -step instructions. So clarify the request, show th at least three ideas. Uh, if there's an idea with location and the you know, location is unclear, make sure, et cetera. So this is all what makes this gem run. And this is how Google created this gem. They just wrote these instructions and made it specific, right? So let's say I want to create my own gem. And is that an intense thing to do? It's not actually, really. So let's say I'm always looking at survey results. So I'm going to make a survey gem. So I'm going to say, you are a survey analyzing expert. And then what do I want them to, uh, to analyze? Or, or let's just say, you give suggestions on how to improve the survey results for the future. Let's do that. Now, that's not a really good and not, not like really baked in instructions for this gem, right? While using this button, use Gemini to rewrite instructions, this is actually using Gemini to write a Gemini gem. It's, it's, it's kind of multi-layered. But now it's taking those basic instructions and evolving them to giving them behavior and rules, uh, communication, overall tone, all this stuff, behaviors, purpose, and goals. And I can continue to add to this and make this a bigger, better version of the gem that I want. So now I can save this gem and start a chat just with this gem, right? Awesome. Uh, last thing I want to show you is Gemini's ability to just analyze files. I'm going to upload a file from my computer, and it is going to be about storms. This is like a 10,000 uh, cell CSV. And it doesn't matter, by the way, what type of CSV or spreadsheet this is. It could be an Excel spreadsheet as well. I'm just going to say analyze this and see what it comes up with. By the way, very bad Gemini prompt to just analyze it. Analyze it for what, Chris? I don't know. I'll, we'll, we'll specify after it gives me some examples. All right, so it's focusing on these. It's going into the pressure. Oh, it's going to plot a histogram for me. Oh, that's very nice. Examining a relationship of frequency. It just keeps going. It's just starting to analyze basic things. And from here, I can ask it about specific subjects inside this, this CSV as well. It's creating a pie chart. Awesome. Great. So that's Gemini as an app. Uh, I can have it converse. I can integrate it into my Google Workspace, into my doc sheet slides, my files. I can have it ask ask about my emails, and I can create gems to get specific things done. As another example for gems, we have a coworker who uh, puts in 
all the information about Worsta inside his gem, and he uses it to respond to customers and clients, right? Uh, there are two future updates to gems happening that I'm very excited for coming out, I believe, this quarter. The first uh, update would be the ability to upload files into the gem itself so that it's always an, an expert on those files. And the other update will be the ability to share gems externally or internally with everybody inside your workplace. You can't technically do that yet, but eh, nothing's stopping you from copying the instructions and pasting them to your friend or what have you. But I'm excited to have like an internal HR gem as an example, right? Awesome. So now let's go into my email. And you'll see that the other thing about uh, having Gemini Advanced or Gemini Business Licenses is that you have this side panel uh, inside all of Google Workspace apps now. Your docs, your sheets, your slides, your Gmail, your drive, PDFs, forms, vids. Yeah, all those. So from here inside my inbox, I can just ask it normal questions about my, my email. We're going to go back into that email from Blake. So Blake, with AI, I can quickly respond to his emails with larger responses. This is sort of like quick responses on steroids. Uh, it can it uh, sets up meetings. It's It fully looks at the context of a thread of an email and then responds likewise to that. Or if I wanted to, I could just type in a response. So I'm going to say, suggest a uh, a feedback survey, keeping in my theme of feedback surveys. Great, I'm excited to hear from you. I understand going to schedule a meeting, uh, feedback survey. Great, awesome. And now I can just attach the feedback survey and send out my email. It's also inside my Google Drive as well. We're gonna go into my demos, bud group. So from here, you can see there's the side panel where I can summarize topics, learn about files. That's my favorite thing to do is learn about files. So I'm gonna select all of these files at once and ask Gemini about them to summarize them. So Maurice, your data is secure inside uh, gemini.google.com because it's your own works tenant of Gemini. It doesn't go into the public version. And I'll also be sharing a slide that, that explains that uh, in the future as well. So here are all these files summarized for me. And in fact, I can at and bring in other files as well to continue this conversation in this side panel. I can take this summary and I can copy it or I can insert it into a doc as well. But let's go into this bug group about. There's that side panel again. And you can see one of my favorite things about uh, Gemini is that it now will automatically summarize every single doc sheet and slide you ever open inside it. Uh, so now that I look into a document. The first thing I do is I glance over here in this right-hand corner and I get a summary of the document before I go into the 14 pages of all of the detailed nuances of the document, right? And from here, I can ask Gemini questions about it as well, or because it's integrated into my drive, I can bring in other files, right? So I'm gonna do bud group post-construction cleaning checklist, and I'm gonna say, write a blog about bud groups, origins, and their cleaning checklist. So now it's using these two documents as well to combo and create a blog post that I would like. Now, is this blog post ready? I'd say no. I'd say it's about 65, 75% of the way there, maybe. Uh, I would add more specific uh, use cases, more details, make it more uh, more uh, nuanced as well. But I'd say a lot of jobs right now uh, slow down because they're just staring at a blank page. Uh, they have whatever it is, writer's block, create and creativity blocks. And using AI to just start brainstorming is something that's so useful and something that saves me so much time all the time. So from here, I can insert this entirely into the document as well. I can highlight sections of it and refine the text using AI. I can bulletize or elaborate from the text 
insert it. And from all of a sudden, I'm building out documents that it would have taken me more than half an hour to write or more, especially if I'm with a huge group of people, right? We're going to create a slide about Bud Group too, because why not? Because again, there's the side panel with Gemini. So I'm going to say using the Bud Group about, create a slide with Bud Group's, uh, let's say, goals. Now, occasionally you get the Gemini that reacts after like 15 seconds or so. But right now, what it's doing is it's creating a slide just from scratch. Uh, it can't create an entire slide deck yet, but I hear that that is coming. It's taking a little bit longer than usual, but that's what you do when you do live. That's what you get when you do live tech demos. There we go. So now I can insert this slide and start going. Uh, and also created a uh, AI image as well to insert into the slide uh, that I can, if I want to, create a different AI image. I can go to images, help me create an image. And all these images are uh, are for that, or are licensed and proprietary to that domain as well when you create an AI image. I'm almost done with my demo, but this is, again, a quick rocket blast. We're going to go into vids google.com something you also get with gemini and we're going to create a quick bud group video as well super fast i'm just going to bring in that file and it will create this outline for me that i can edit their history post-construction cleaning back to school wow quite a big outline I'm going to hit next. Right now, you have these three templates. I'm going to click this one. And it will create a quick little video, probably, I think, two-ish minutes or so, using editing, using a script, all about Bud Group that I can now edit internally or at least look at for a video uh, to demo. Whoa, that was so fast. I was totally expecting it to be like 45 seconds. Uh, so you can see that now it includes the script that I can, if I want, record myself or generate the voiceover of the AI, uh, then I can scroll forward. All these videos, by the way, are, they are right here. I think that's, nope, that's shapes. There we go. They are stock media. So I can choose multiple videos or I can insert my own video as well if I want, uh, including stock media like images, music, sound effects, GIFs, web images. It's a really awesome tool that uh, people are just scratching the surface of being able to use. Awesome. Trying to think, I went through docs, sheet. No, nope, I didn't do sheets. We'll do sheets really, really quickly. Uh, so I'm going to say employee sample data. And by the way, this is a Google spreadsheet, but let's do an Excel spreadsheet just for funsies. Uh, again, it'll summarize that document. It doesn't care if it's a Microsoft document or a Google document as well. And you can see that there's a bunch of data about people getting paid here. I'm just going to say create a formula. Let me spell. To find the USA employees who make more than a 5% bonus. Let's do that. And from here, I can ask it questions about my data if I want as well. I'm going to delete this column. It gave me the formula. It gave me the result that's too long. And now I can insert that result as well inside the sheet. And I can also ask it about my data, ask it about, uh, about uh, what's going on with, with different data points. Uh, it's really useful, and having AI as your working companion is uh, incredibly awesome. I'm, that was my demo, my, my rocket blast through Gemini. So I'm going to go back into our presentation. And let me add, there we go, presenting something else. And let me bring in Chris into this conversation. 
because Chris has a lot of experience with using Gemini right now because he's testing Gemini inside his workplace tenant. And I've got a few questions for, for Chris, but let's just start with the basics of, of what, what brought you into using Gemini uh, and what made you want to test Gemini out in the first place, Chris? Yeah, so you've learned a little bit about the bug group over the last 10 minutes or so, just using us as the example, but as you've learned, we're a facility services company or service solutions company, meaning that we provide janitorial services, landscaping, et cetera. So we really obsess over the customer experience and want a lot of our uh, corporate employees to be customer facing and, you know, really boosting the, the customer experience. So because we have a lot of folks, you know, customer facing and spending their time there, um, you know, our corporate function, we need to keep really efficient and, and lean. So having something like Gemini is incredibly valuable to optimize our time, find valuable insights, um, you know, do certain things you wouldn't be able to do with the same amount of manpower without it. So, right. um, oh, go ahead, Chris. No, so you, you've you introduced Gemini to your workplace and, uh and of course, people just like get the Gemini license and they don't know, really know what to do with it, right? Right, right. So, I mean, that's where you all came in. We did a training together for um, a couple different groups as we've rolled out the pilot. I think we have we have 40 to 50 folks with Gemini licenses thus far and really getting a lot of insights into how we're we're using it and and it's been great so far. So whether it's just using the the note taking within the meetings so that I can concentrate on being present and then the note taker is putting action items together for me and all that, there's a number of different uses that we found. That's awesome. And yeah, note taking is something I barely touched on, but it's one of the superpowers of Gemini. I use it all the time. And in fact, in some of my meetings with managers or so on and so forth, I, I have it automatically start when the meeting starts, right? And the note taking, uh, the summary, it lives, yeah, in the top right hand corner of the screen that we're using right now and you can like look at it, but it also, uh, it goes into its own Google doc that I can reference. So customers like you, uh, I can just look into our notes to see what are the latest updates or what we talked about last time. Uh, we work with dozens of companies right now uh, with Gemini, and they're all using Gemini for all these crazy use cases, right? We've got a Gemini people uh, in a protein company using it for to test proteins on on folks ages 45 to 75, and we've got you guys using it for for facilities resources and for management and for and for uh, for marketing sources. So it's all these different reasons you can use Gemini, and it's we're only just scratching the surface, right? Um, Looking into the future, what do you see? How do you see using Gemini and Bug Group in the future? Like, what are what are the things you're looking to 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 improve upon? Yeah, I think we're just starting to scratch the surface. I mean, just today I was having a conversation with one of my recruiters, and they mentioned that they used Gemini to put together a KPI sheet for a new hire um, mm -hmm. because they were able to have it look at certain documents and information we had and generate that for them, saving them you know, essentially hours of time. Uh, me as a project manager, a lot of what I do, I look through the lens of project management. So I'm continually creating project artifacts like charters, risk registers, work breakdowns. And I have Gemini take a look at my different artifacts. Hey, this is the project I'm, I'm working on. Here's a risk register I created, you know, have it look at everything. What insights may I have I missed and it can give me a couple risks I may have missed or different elements for a work breakdown I may have not have thought of. So I yeah. use it to keep me honest and, you know, really help save time on on those different elements. Um, and again, things that me as one person, one project manager wouldn't necessarily have the bandwidth or time to do. It really adds that layer of complexity and efficiency. Um, and I only see more uses coming in the future. That's awesome. And if I may suggest, that sounds like a really good use case for a uh, project managing gem as well. It's uh, something that, that keeps you focused on those projects and suggests things in specific ways that are specific to bug group, right? I'm glad you say that actually, because I'm concurrently managing a number of projects. 
So I have gems for the different projects that knows what I'm working on for that specific project. So I don't have to retype that each time I need to use the chat tool. It already knows, hey, this is my gem for, you know, I'll, I'll just say project A, and it has all the information there and can answer specifically for that. That's awesome. That's really cool, Chris. Um, well, well, honestly, it's it's great to work with people like Chris that uh, that are really focused on innovation for their companies. It's a uh, it's really cool to to see the AI work and uh, people learn and and be able to save time on a on a daily to weekly basis. Uh, and we're happy to have you here to to talk about your experiences. It's re it's really useful. Um, does anybody on the call? I'm just going to open up questions for for Chris and for for myself really quickly. Chris, while we're waiting for folks to jump in, just one other awesome use case I use all the time. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. you've showed some of the email generation and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But I like to have it look at my project documents, and I'll have it analyze all that and put together numerous emails at the same time. So I'll say, put one email together for this audience using this information. The second email, keep it high level for this audience. And I've had it generate five emails to different audiences, including different subsets of the same information. Hmm. Um, and it generates it like that. I have five emails that could go out to different audiences with different levels of information. That's really cool. Uh... Yeah, and, and using the different, I use uh, give me three examples in AI all the time. So sometimes I'll ask it for information, but I'll also say, hey, give me three thought experiments about the subject that I want to learn, or give me three different ways to say this, right? Uh, Sean says, how do you leverage Gemini for your companies in sales and marketing efforts? Uh, I'm, I'm going to just say, just blanket statement, uh, a lot of sales and marketing efforts are looking at that blank page and starting from scratch sometimes. What is this new thing that we're launching? What is this new brand that we're talking about, right? So so starting something from scratch with Gemini is super easy, but I'll back off and let, let you talk as well to that, Chris. Yeah, you know, can analyze business trends, give you a starting point. I mean, you've showed it how you can generate images and slides and even blogs uh, straight from Gemini and use that even as a starting point. Uh, you could put in prompts for social media. If you mm -hmm. specify that this prompt is for a social media post, yep. it will change the response and uh, format it for the specific social media, you know, use emojis if you want. So you tell it what to do and social media has a huge presence in, in sales and marketing these days and it can really give you a head start. Okay? Totally. And useful tip inside sales and marketing specifically is the tone of Gemini as well that you can specify. Uh, all these adjectives, is Gemini, are you blunt? Is it is it assertive? Is it goofy? Is it wacky? Is it from the point of view of a Cali surfer? All of these things Gemini can read and intonate into its responses to make the responses a little bit more specific or nuanced as well. Will Gemini and Google Gemini use your data to train its model if you're not using the Gemini Google Gemini paid license? Um, uh, from my understanding, your personal Gemini account or your personal Google Gmail, your like your normie Gmail, will be using that data to train its model. Uh, the free version of basic Gemini that that were that uh, companies get, I don't believe it's being trained on the large language model as well. But there are certain aspects of issues that you can still report or you can still say, as an example, you can thumbs up and thumbs down the notes that are being taken right now. And those thumbs up and thumbs down are uh, are are looked at by by Google uh, by Google folks to say what went wrong, what didn't go wrong here, right? Awesome. Well, I'm going to continue on since we're coming towards the end. Uh, we're going to talk really quickly about securing your data. This is an awesome chart of how the data and privacy and governance in Google Gemini works. So you can see that this represents the bubble that I've been talking about. I'll stop saying the word bubble uh, during this presentation. But you can see that the user prompt is inside the in your domain so that Google does not share your prompts with other users and organizations. Uh, and it uses the existing DLP rules and access controls to, to talk to your files as well. 
uh, and so that you can see that this is the instance of Gemini, uh, and it, uh, there's the Google Workspace Trust boundary. We can uh, expand upon this at a later date if you want to contact our, our sales and our engineers as well. And it's also good to mention a, another sort of behind the scenes cool thing about uh, Google or Gemini for Google Workspace is AI data classification. If you have a lot of DLP rules inside your domain using Google Workspace, this levels it up quite substantially because you can train, Google, uh, train Gemini to automatically label Google Drive files for you. Uh, and with these labels, you can apply DLP rules. So as an example, if you have an SOW written in Google Drive, you can label that SOW and then that will train Gemini so that when anyone else writes that uh, writes an SOW, that label will automatically be applied. This takes a little bit of training uh, with the model, but uh, also Gemini itself, uh, once it is fully trained, you can basically step back and let the model do its thing. And say that SOW changes from not an SOW, it changes into a completely different document. Gemini will also go back into those documents every, I wanna say 48 hours, and uh, make sure that label is correct on those documents and files inside your drive. And that is something that also we talk about and also train on. Speaking of training on and, and, and everything that Worsta does, let's talk about uh, Gemini pricing and the transformation packaging. This is what a SKU looks like for Gemini. You can see that uh, here's the, the free version. Uh, you, you just have the app and you have basically unlimited usage of it. Uh, but then we're, there's just the AI security add-on as well that is, um, uh, and, and that's $10 per person. We have the AI meetings and messaging add-on. So that's just uh, being able to take the notes inside uh, inside our, our meet. And then we have the business add-on as well. So you can see that you have the side panel with the business add-on and then the enterprise add-on includes taking notes for meeting and then the AI data classification. The AI security add-on is basically the AI data classification as well. Uh, so this is what a SKU looks like. This is for, this is per user per month with an annual contract but talk to your worst rep and we can uh, try to negotiate that for you on your behalf. Uh, and we also offer professional services because when you get a Gemini license, it's very intimidating. You don't know what to do or how to begin, right? So uh, we do. We offer multiple ways of, develop, of deploying Gemini. Uh, everything from a discovery lab where we talk with you and your folks to uh, have a workshop on how Gemini can be useful for you, what you can use it for. Uh, there's the express pilot, which is basically just trying Gemini for 30 days. And if you like it, you'd like it. And if you don't, you don't. Uh, but we provide uh, the framework for evaluating that. We provide training and office hours so that you can sit back and relax and watch your folks use Gemini and we can help make sure that that's a successful trial. And then we extend that trial as well to a guided evaluation, the 30 to 90 day trial period to make sure that uh, maybe people were just starting to, to get to have fun with Gemini at the end of this 30 day, but you wanted to extend that quite a bit. Uh, we do weekly checkpoints, we do evaluations as well, and then we can do a, a full Gemini deployment uh, if you're just all 100% all bought in. Uh, these are the things we offer. Now, we offer uh, personal one-on-one -on -one training, and that is with our team of uh, change management and Google Gemini experts. You might get me as a trainer, you might get uh, some other amazing folks that we have on staff inside Worsta, but anyone that you get is fully qualified and even an expert in their field about what they are training on. And uh, out of the box in our custom development services, you can see that we focus on four, uh, we highlight these four general sections. We highlight search and conversation. This is talking with our personal customer engineer team uh, to personalize interactions with your data. We do content generation. Uh, we help you with Gemini uh, creating data-driven insights. And then we talk about vision and predictive abilities of Gemini as well. Does Worsta also assist with creating AI governance and related policies? We can totally do that. Uh, I think that you would talk to our specific AI customer engineers related to uh, being able to do that, but that is something you can definitely reach out to our reps about. 
So here are some awesome resources for Gemini. If you are just interested in learning about it more, I'm gonna copy this link. Uh, okay, someone pop that link into the chat as well uh, for everyone. So we've got two things. We got the free prompting guide that Google has offered, and this is the latest and greatest prompting guide uh, that came out, I wanna say like last week. Uh, so it's up to date. And then also at, one of the things I love doing at Worsta is creating crazy little videos. Uh, you'll see I have a monthly video of what would Worsta do in our YouTube channel. And as well as there's a YouTube playlist of quick tips for Gemini. We do tips for docs, sheet slides, Gemini chat, and we are trying to add one every week. Uh, so And, and so it, that library is just going to be expanding and expanding. Can we select certain users for one service level and others for a different service level? Or is it all for, or nothing? That's a great question that you can talk with our reps about. Um, I know that you can uh, you can organize it by OU. So uh, I'm gonna say yes, you can put people on different service levels by OU. Uh, and then also we have a future Gemini webinar because Gemini, they add so many updates, guys. They add updates every, basically every week or so, which is also, something that is super useful uh, to have us as a partner about because we keep you in touch with all those updates. So you can see that there will be a uh, Gemini new features uh, webinar series similar to this one in December, uh, demos of the latest future releases and then special guests that we'll have as well. It could be a customer, it could be a Googler uh, as well. But I also wanna thank Chris for being on this call, being our uh, Gemini customer and guinea pig. Uh, it's great to have you and to be able to have a conversation. Brian, let me get you uh, Gemini uh, HIPAA compliance. Let me see in my files. So right now, I don't believe Gemini app supports HIPAA compliance at this time, but you can still use it and be HIPAA compliant in a few ways. And I'm gonna pass over a document to Brian specifically and to anybody else who is interested on the different compliant levels, compliance levels of Gemini. No problem. Thank you for the great question, Brian. Uh, and thank you, Robert, for the compliment. I appreciate you. Uh, I don't have a Venmo, just kidding. Uh, but uh, happy to be here. And happy to answer any other questions that you guys have. Do we have anything else? Yes. So connect with us today. We're here to help you. We're here to make these crazy technological advances understandable and easygoing uh, so that you're not stressed out about trying to keep your, com your company in touch or, or, uh, or, or just, yeah, we, we, we help you a lot with all these technological advances, and that's what we're here for. So please reach out to a Worcester rep. Email us at info at worcester.com. Visit our website at www.worcester.com. And if you're a current client, I'm glad that you're here. Uh, that's It's cool to get to know you better. And so email your account manager at accountmanagement at worcester.com. Uh, I appreciate everyone that is here, and I hope that everyone has an awesome spooky Halloween. And I hope to see you more in the future. And also you can find me on LinkedIn if you want as well, Christopher Hopkins Ward. All you gotta do is search that and you can find me.